Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today's video is my review on the new Huda Beauty Desert Dusk palette. If you guys watch me, you know the drill. There will be timestamps below if you want to skip ahead to cost breakdown or swatches or any of that. I hate it that I have to say it every video, but if I didn't, undoubtedly there will be people saying, your videos are too long. So I have to say it each time. So I'm sure many of you are familiar with Huda Catan. If you guys are interested in some brand background on Huda, I'm gonna link my last review of the rose gold palette below because in the beginning I got into all of that. So just so I'm not repeating myself, if you wanna check that, there's a timestamp in the description box. I'll have it linked down below. I read in an interview that she said the inspiration for this palette was she wanted a rich, mysterious Arabian sunset feel to it. This is her second eyeshadow palette. The first was the textured rose gold one. This one was a limited edition and I read that this one is permanent. Where you can find this palette is on Huda's site, on Sephora, Cult Beauty, and Selfridges. There might be some other places, but that's all I could find. This is already launched online and it will be available in stores on October 13th. The cost for this palette is $65 and I did wait and order this from Sephora's website instead of international because I have to pay $20 shipping. So I got this with free shipping with my Sephora. This is what the packaging looks like. Um, I like this packaging so much better. I think she kind of took the feedback from this one that kind of felt a little flimsy and cheap. This one feels much more sturdy and there's a nice big mirror in here. It did have, um, you'll see in my up close swatches, but I already recycled that, a little insert of um, kind of like a see-through, oh, did I just stick my nail in there? <laughs> kind of like a see-through of her face like this. Um, that was really pretty. And then this is the packaging it came in on the outside, which is really nice. Just like her last palette, this is made in Italy. You're getting 18 shades and each shade is 1.4 grams each for a total of 25.2 grams total worth of product. That's actually more than her last palette. Um, this last one, you got 18 grams of product. So this one, they're the same cost and this one you're getting more. In this palette, you're getting four different finishes. You're getting eight mattes, six pressed pearls, three duo chromes, and one that they're calling a uh, pure glitter, even though it's not pure glitter because there are other ingredients. The only duplicate shade in this palette is angelic. Um, from this other palette. The formulas are different though. Um, these pressed pearls are different than these pressed pearls, like the angelic in here. The matte formulas are all different. This entire uh, formula has been overhauled. The shelf life on this palette is 12 months. I don't have an order date or shipping again, guys, because I did go right to Sephora for this and I get two day shipping. I did order it um, right when it launched though. This palette is not vegan because it does contain carmine, but it is cruelty free. So I just wanna read you guys the back of the box. It says, immerse yourself in the soft warmth of the desert, rays of the sunset light, washing the sky in dunes with rich hues of changing plums, corals, ochres, and golds. 18 mesmerizing shades encapsulated in four ready to layer textures. Eight buttery mattes blending with your skin for color that does not move. Six sublime pressed pearls casting a shimmery veil over your eyes. Three duochrome toppers revealing their magic under the light, and then one daring glitter for audacious looks celebrating your inner hashtag desert queen. Show some cost breakdowns on the screen right now. Um, this palette, obviously, since I had already mentioned, you're getting more in this palette than in this palette. This palette comes out to $2.58 per gram, where this one was $3.61 per gram. I went through the ingredients to see if I could find anything just like this online and I can't. And again, the ingredients from this palette to this palette, the formula is different. As you are aware, I did not like this palette. Um, I do really like this palette, but I'll talk about uh, some things I don't like about it in a minute. I went through and I started trying to find dupes for this. Um, I will show you in some swatches, some comparisons, but I'm gonna link Angela Tanner's page below, her Instagram. She's awesome at finding dupes. I swear my eye starts twitching. It's just so many shadows to go through and little slight nuances of these shadows, I mean, can make it very time consuming to find them and she does a great job. So she has all dupes listed on her page. So I'll link her below. You guys should go check her out if you're interested in that. These shadows are talc free. They do have ferric ferrocyanide in here, ultramarines and carmine. If you have sensitivity um, to those ingredients on your eyes, then this would be a skip for you. So how these apply, I'm wearing this on my eyes today. I have to say, I really, really have been enjoying this palette. 
I do like the color combinations in here. You guys could guess it probably because of the purples, uh, the red, orange, like these little berry shades. Shadows do require some building where other shadows in these tones that I own, I can just kind of tap in and then I won't need to go back through. If I want these colors to not kind of like blend into a more muted color, I have to dip into this at least twice. Like I'll dip in, put it on, blend it out, and then go back in and kind of pack it on a little more and lightly diffuse or I'll keep blending the color away. But I do think that that makes them easier to apply opposed to something like the subculture palette that is extremely pigmented. When you touch in and put your brush down, you have to be a little more careful and deliberate with your placement of your brush or you're gonna pick up too much pigment. So I do think that that makes this palette easier to blend. He did say on these duochromes, this, this, and this, that these are meant to be kind of like um, shifters or like something that you put on top of an already laid down color that'll kind of give it some shift. Today on my eyes, I have saffron up. Um, I kind of did like a little bit of a cut crease, blended it out with blazing up on the top here. I packed on amber on the outside corner and then I deepened it up with this Oud, oud, oud. I'm sorry if I'm saying that wrong, O-U-D. And I went through and I put Eden um, on the inner third of my eye. I packed on Amethyst on that middle part and kind of blended it in. I topped Amethyst with Retrograde. This does not play nice with brushes. Like hardly anything picks up with this. You do have to use your finger. Don't like my fingers, but I did use one of those sponge tip old school applicators you guys told me about to use and that works well with this. I didn't really pick up a whole lot when I'm trying to pack it on my eye with my MAC 242, so I did have to use that sponge tip applicator and I did have to use glitter glue with the these shimmers like I always do but especially um, this one and this one or I don't see a whole lot of color on my lower lash line I have amethyst um, smoked out pretty far down I topped the Eden with angelic and I think that's it oh and the inner corner highlight and down on this lower lash line I used twilight which is a really pretty color this purple um, like I have it underneath my eyes it, it's not a good purple I do like the color, you can build it up, but it is extremely patchy, like when you try to do swatches of that, and you do need to build it up. So if you just pick up your brush, it's gonna go on light, you kind of have to go back in like this. I, I went in like three times, and to me it doesn't seem extremely purple. Um, it doesn't read that way when I'm looking at myself. Like if I get up, up close, I can see it, but for how purple it is here, I would have expected a little more punch of color. This Cosmo, they're saying, it basically feels like maybe someone put a dollop of like glycerin maybe in the bottom of this pan and then dumped loose glitter in here. When you touch it, it does get crumbly. It does flake everywhere. I used um, my MAC 242 and some glitter glue and I packed this all over my eye one day for a look. It was so pretty. Oh, I think I had that on in a video, but I mean, standard with any glitter. I had glitter little specks on my face and it was driving me crazy. Um, I do think it's really pretty. I do find it odd being kind of in a palette like this. I think I would have preferred mine in a little side, but it is a beautiful color. Last time, one of my critiques of the palette was I find the mattes to be extremely dry and chalky with the exception of the last three shades in here. Um, I find all of these mattes really nice. They are still dry feeling um, and the way I'll try to Think about it is if you've ever touched like the Natasha Denona mats they almost feel wet that's like the dimethicone in there you can feel it they kind of feel a little heavy and, and wet these are dry feeling it doesn't make for a lot of fallout the only fallout I get when using this palette are these um, the duo chromes and the shimmers I'll get some fallout so you might want to do your eye makeup first and then go in your foundation. I find the wear on these very good. Again, um, even the glitter, it held up really well. I mean, a glitter is a glitter uh, with glitter glue, but I did have specks on my face. Okay, so Ripley was kind enough to swatch for me again on deeper skin tone. I will have her foundation shades listed in the description box below with a link to her page. I urge you to go follow her. Okay guys, let's get into some swatches now. I will be swatching in my typical fashion. I will be laying down a base of Urban Decay's Primer Potion. I will be swatching the shimmer shades with my MAC 242 brush, and I will be swatching the mattes with my MAC 239 brush. In between swatches, I will be cleaning my brush in my color switch so my brush will not be damp. As always, the first swatch will be a finger swatch, and the one right next to it will be a brush swatch just so you can see the difference in performance.
So in closing, um, would I repurchase this palette? Yes, I would repurchase this palette. Um, this first one was a complete fail for me and I only keep it uh, for dupe purposes. I have been reaching for this a lot and using it. I brought this with me when I went to my friend's wedding in LA and I actually wore this on. I do like it that it's a very interesting mix of colors, I think. This is right up my alley with the oranges, the berries, the purples. I really like it. The shades that I'm not a fan of, like I do love this color amethyst, but again, it is patchy and this retrograde is difficult to get on. Um, you have to use like a sponge tip applicator if you don't like that and you don't wanna do that. I don't think that you'll enjoy some of these shimmers. I do like it that she also gave a mirror, even though I don't use them. It just feels a little more substantial. Like this feels like a little frisbee and this has some weight to it. Would I recommend this palette? I would if you like to do kind of more of these like intense eye looks. If you're someone that just likes to wear everyday colors, you can still do some neutral, some neutral looks, but I don't think that you're gonna get a ton of versatility from this palette because um, again, the colors are more so for me, nighttime or weekend time colors. So that's all I pretty much have to say. If you guys have any questions, comments, or concerns, please leave them in the comment section down below. Thank you so much for tuning in guys and I will see you next time. Bye.